In this video, we'll be taking a look at Lambda. Lambda is a service provided by AWS, and it facilitates serverless architectures. For those of you who are unfamiliar with serverless architectures, essentially what it means is that you no longer have to deal with any of the software or hardware below the application layer. And so let's say in the past, you would work for a company like Amazon, where there would be a web front and users could go and buy books and things like that. Well, in the past, what you would do is you would end up buying a whole bunch of servers in order to handle your back end. Now, there's a couple of problems with that. One being that servers can only handle a finite amount of requests at a time. And so if for whatever reason the demand were higher than the number of servers could handle, well then you would have to go out and buy more. And the other problem is that when you have all these servers, they're running all the time. It doesn't matter whether it's 2 a.m. and no one's coming to visit your site to buy things. Those servers are still running and consuming resources. Um, other benefits provided by AWS Lambda is that they, they essentially take all of that away. And so you no longer have to update the operating systems of your servers, they'll do that for you. If there's any security patches that you need to apply, they'll do that for you. They'll automatically scale your servers up and down with demand, and they'll also monitor the servers to make sure that they're up and running and that they're performing adequately, adequately for your users. And so with Lambda, you can basically write your backend in the following languages. So we have JavaScript or Node, Java, Python, Go, this is recently new, and then .NET as well. And essentially how Lambda works is you won't write code like you would a regular application. Essentially, you're kind of writing hooks called handlers, and these will be triggered on specific events. So let's say you have a user, your Instagram, and you have a user who's uploading a picture to an S3 bucket. Well, that might trigger a Lambda function, so you might do something with that and things of that nature. And so what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to define our handler or Lambda function. And we'll do export. And then we'll call our handler handler. Now the Lambda function takes in three parameters, the first being event. So the event that occurs, so uploading the picture, this event object might have properties that you want to deal with within the Lambda function. And then we have the context, and the context is essentially the context of Lambda. So you can pull things like how much time you have left for the Lambda to run, because I think by default, the Lambda function will time out after three seconds or something like that. And so you can pull up properties of that sort. And then finally, we have the callback. If you wanted to run a callback. And we will simply be returning a hello world. OK, so we're going to keep this as simple as possible. Now what we'll want to do is we'll want to zip up the file. Next, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to define a role 
because we need to pass that in when we go to create our lambda function. And so I will use a JSON configuration file for this. And I will copy this. So essentially what this is saying is it's saying allow access to the Lambda service. And so if we go back here, we're going to create our role using AWS IM create role. Role name will be the Lambda role. And then assume role policy document. And then we're going to pass it in our role.json. Interesting. Okay. I kind of jumped the gun there, so I am missing a S right here. So there we go. Now we created a role. You're going to want to um, keep the Amazon resource name because we're going to use that for when we go to create the Lambda function. And so to create the Lambda function, we run AWS Lambda create function, function name, we'll call this hello world, we'll pass it the zip file. You need to add a B right here, because otherwise it won't work. B uh, is, refers to byte, essentially. And then the runtime, we're going to use node.js 8.10. The role, we're going to use our ARN. And then the handler, this is important. So for the handler, you want to do the name of the file dot the name of the handler. And remember, we called our handler handler. So we'll do handler. Oh. Looks like I did not clean up properly. So I will be right back. Sorry about that. I could have sworn I deleted it. So anyways, we'll delete it. Now we'll rerun this. All right, so now we've created our Lambda function. And now what we're going to do is we're going to invoke it manually. So normally you would set this up so that it's triggered on some event. But we're just going to run AWS Lambda invoke function name, hello world, and then we're going to specify an output file for it to store the output. Okay, and now if we take a look at the output, you can see that we got our hello world back. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Bye.